did you always have this dream of wanting to be a champion surfer? Yes, I did. But that was from uh, when I was eight years old. Dad told me I was adopted. I decided, all right, if I'm not deserving of my mother's love, then if I become the best in the world, I'll be deserving of everyone's love. And so when I reflect on that period, I realise how much of my self-worth was wrapped up in my pursuit of success. And in the event that I didn't succeed it, then I was never going to be worthy. So the good thing is that I wasn't relying on somebody else's um, projected opinion of me. It was more my own. Fortunately, I wasn't waiting for someone to tell me I was worthy. However, the self-worth piece has probably been the biggest lesson that I've learned and the, and the hardest one to learn. But I think that that's why it's also just so important and amazing that you're able to be so open about that journey because I think it allows people to fully understand like you know if they were to look at your life as like oh my god she's this amazing champion and she's still kind of you know figuring out her self-worth and all the things that every person is plagued with I think that's when we really start to like understand each other and that seeking outside validation isn't necessarily what is going to fulfill that for us and it's a it's a bit of a dichotomy because our egos tell us that we need to be validated and so we're constantly fueled by our egos and in the event that we're living our lives according to other people's projected opinions and expectations then we're never going to feel like we're enough and if we are constantly subscribing to that illusion then no matter what we do we're never going to achieve success and happiness and because we haven't really been able to define it and then we're not really sure what's wrapped up in it and uh, yeah, I'm, I, of course, as you suggest, I'm still going through this self-awareness journey as we all are, but uh, that sense of enoughness starts with us. We don't have to keep seeking permission to be told that we're good enough, smart enough, talented enough, because everything that, that is communicating with us outside of us is telling us the opposite. So you had this you know, stream that everybody saw of you that was like public perception, absolute champion. Mm. And then it's so interesting that the other stream was just the same shit that every single other person is dealing with, which is like, you know, problems with your peers, you know, problems with disliking yourself and all that stuff. And yeah. I think that's so important for people to hear is mm. that like, we all just have the same things going on on the inside, no matter what is going on the on the outside. Yeah. And it's why we need to stop looking externally for validation. But it's just really interesting that those two things, that's not ultimately what did fulfill you. No. 100%. And the thing is, that, hello, I'm human. <laughs> Welcome to the human existence. <laughs> yes, I have my shitty days. I have my sad days. I have my fat days, ugly days, stupid days. You know, <laughs> I don't, I, I used to put on a whole lot of masks and being a, a, a public persona, people expect you to be what they want from you. You know, they expect you to be what they, how they know you or how they perceive you. And so days when I'm feeling depressed or sad or upset or ugly or stupid or fat, they're the days that it makes it really challenging to walk out and put on the happy face. And uh, so that means I have to actually process where are those thoughts and emotions coming from and what's producing them and how can I get through them a lot faster than the regular human being. So I am willing to sit in it. I am willing to look at it. I am willing to process it and digest it. People see the outcome and thinks it was easy and no one realizes that there's a whole lot of sticky, messy, shitty areas that you need to get through it's called the human existence some fears are there to keep you safe and keep you sane but ultimately because our because our fears are predominantly psychological uh it's it stands for a great acronym it's false experiences appearing real f-e-a-r and when we buy into these beliefs and these patterns of thought that that keep us stuck if we don't step into it, it validates us. Because it's your fear saying, no, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, there's no way you can do this. And then you step back and then your fear goes, or your ego says, see, I told you so, you mm. can't. And, uh, and we'd rather be right than happy as human beings. It, first, you have to recognize that you are afraid. And then second, face it, face your fears. And I know it's a classic cliche, face your fears, face your fears. You know, Fear is there to stop us from fulfilling our potential. Fear is there to test us, as you were saying, Steph. Fear is there to keep us safe and it's there to challenge us and test us and step us outside of our comfort zone. Fear is essentially if we embrace our fear, it enlarges our comfort zone. But we think that by staying in our comfort enlarges it, but all it does is shrink it because fear becomes bigger. So if you think about there's two circles and the comfort zone's the outside circle and fear's the inside circle, if the fear gets bigger and bigger, it actually starts to absorb all our comfort and we become comfortable in fear <laughs> so if the first thing you need to do is recognize that you are afraid then you have to be willing to 
acknowledge or accept or at least determine what steps are you going to take right now to confront the fear and then actually take the action. 